Hello guys, this is the Gaming Weasel back again with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering my top 5 endgame Warframes in Warframe at 2020 and 2021, early 2021. Now, a couple of things that I want to keep in mind here, that I want you guys to keep in mind, is this is my list. So this is my opinion, and these are Warframes that I definitely recommend you to, to pick up if you get the chance, and uh, use them when you can. Uh, but... In, in the end, it's just my opinion. Now, the second thing, I won't be uh, putting any helmet abilities on these Warframes. I'm just going to be covering the base Warframe with its default abilities. Because uh, this way, newer players can pick these Warframes up and don't have to worry about, oh, I need to now get the helmet system to get these other Warframe abilities. I'm just going to keep it as is because it's going to be much easier for newer players. Now, uh, I'm not, not saying that the, the fifth Warframe in the list is much much worse than the first one they, there is a difference and uh, i'm gonna be saying that the first warframes or the top three are just a bit more useful than uh the i guess the fifth or fourth one uh, but in general they're all really cool frames so starting off with our list at number five we have a three-way split actually i can really decide which three of these warframes to choose all three are really good in my opinion uh, Wisp, Saren, and Lavoster is going to be my number 5. And uh, first things first, Wisp is a very good Warframe. Uh, and her most useful ability is her number 1, which is Reservoirs, which you can uh, summon 3 of. And uh, summon 3 variants, sorry, but you can summon 6. Uh, you can summon oh, the Health one, then the Haste one, then the Shock one. Haste will give you increased reload attack and movement speed. Then Health will give you just increased health. And uh, the shock one will infinitely, almost infinitely, lock your enemies in a stun animation. Uh, uh, the build is on screen, by the way, if you want to look at it. Uh, her other three abilities are useful, but not as much as the first one is. She's a very good support Warframe, I have to say. And I love uh, using her. She, she's actually quite fun for me to play, uh, because she kind of is an active Warframe. Not really, but kind of is. And then moving on to Saren. I mean massive damage, you just do AoE damage all over the place, you do viral all over the place. First one is useful, second one useful, third one useful, fourth one useful, so first one is spores. You summon spores on an enemy, if you shoot the spores they will spread out to other enemies or if you even kill the enemy it will spread to other enemies. Then second one is molt, which of course you uh, shed your skin and then you move around 50% faster if I'm correct. And then uh, the enemy fire is redirected to the molt. Third one is Toxic Blade or Toxic Edge. Oh, sorry, I forgot this uh, third ability. But you do toxin damage with your. Uh, you add toxin damage to your weapons, melee weapons. And uh, Miasma is going to be you know, just a massive AoE of viral damage. Now, Lavos is a, is a really good Alchemist frame. I don't really have much to talk about him because I already did it in my video. He's a really good uh, uh, damage or status spreader, so he is a really good survival Warframe with decent armor, health values as well. So that's mostly it that I have to say about him. If you wanna do, a, you know, check him out more, check the video in the in the little eye thing up there. Yes, I forgot what it's called. And moving on to number four, night number four is gonna be Enoros. Now, yes, Enoros can survive everything that is thrown at him. I'm not saying that. He definitely can. He's a Warframe that only has health. His passive is he literally cannot die. He mean he can he can die, but he can just suck enemies dry and then be alive again. So that's cool. His fourth ability and his uh, first and second ability are useful. His first ability does much. Third, th uh, third ability is Sandstorm, which is utterly useless. Utterly useless. I do not like the third ability. Uh, his armor and health values are awesome. And uh, the only thing I don't like about him is that he is a dull Warframe in my opinion. He can survive everything, definitely. But he's not as active as some of the other Warframes that I'll be showing further down the line. Moving on to number 3, I personally think the number 3, Nidus, is a better variant of the of Nid Inaros. Now, not in most senses, but in my opinion, much easier and much uh, funner to play. Now, he has, uh, his passive is, he can also have Undying, but his passive is he has Tax, uh, which you can get up to 100. Now, if you uh, get critically damaged or life-threateningly damaged, he can use up 15 of your stacks to actually revive himself, which is awesome. And considering considering you gain stacks by just doing damage and uh, 
you can get a lot of stacks, believe me. Also, his character changes, or that Warframe's uh, appearance changes, which make Mitch, it makes it look ten times awesomer. It just looks really awesome. So, Violence, uh, you summon like a... It's like Frost is... Um, I think second ability, you just summon a wave of, uh, or I guess you pound the ground and then everything in front of you gets just damaged and uh, you go also gain stacks. This is the main ability that you gain your stacks from. You also gain energy from this and uh, this is mostly based on, uh, the energy return is on power strength, uh, power strength I think. Uh, Lover is the second ability, you drags enemies together, which will make your first ability even more useful. This is an awesome ability, these two sync up very good. Persisting Link is very good as well. Now you can link this to allies and link this to enemies. If you link it to allies, they gain power strength. And if you link it to enemies, uh, uh, the damage, I think, inflicted on Nidus gets redirected to someone else. And uh, now, and Ravenous summons a little... A little grass field with maggots inside of it that suck your enemies literally dry. They just attack your enemies and kill them and it also regenerates health as well which is very nice. I love this Warframe, he's an active Warframe, he is really fun to play and uh, honestly he is a better version of an Aorus in my eyes. He also has only health, he has that undying, he has of, uh, of course his abilities, are, which every single one of those four abilities is useful. He's an active frame that you have to, have to play actively and I really love that about him. Now, moving on to, uh, what's his name? Baruch, I can't even say his name. Baruch is going to be my second uh, Warframe. Now, uh, this Warframe is maybe a toss and turn for some of you guys, but for me he's an awesome frame. I actually didn't know if I wanted to get him at first. But I'm so glad I did. Uh, this Warframe has a Restrained Meter. And when this meter comes down, you can do a massive amount of damage with your 4. Now, uh, you can, of course, get this down by using your first two abilities. Or three abilities, sorry. Elude, which is the first one. Uh, this will allow you to dodge all incoming projectiles. Uh, so anything they shoot at you. But you cannot attack them so you need to stay passive uh, with them and you will literally block any single uh, damage now the strain goes by 0 0.6 per projectile dodge I think that stays the same uh, per I guess power strength so uh, that's nice I mostly use the second and the third ability to lower my strain meter but uh, we'll be covering those abilities right now now lol uh, puts enemies literally to sleep which is awesome the more you cover the better the restrain meter goes down Third is uh, summons a lot of daggers that destroy the enemy's guns uh, with small little explosions and you can combine this with a loot to double the range, which is very nice. And Serene Storm is his fourth ability, which you can use when you... Uh, well, you don't really have to unlock your restraint meter completely, but I would prefer you do so. This will summon his exalted weapon, which is, I think, called Desert Storm? I think what it's called? I actually forgot what it's called. Uh, wait, let me just... Well, I actually know. I, I completely forgot. Sorry, guys. I can't be bored of what, uh, what his ability is called. Or, sorry, Exalted, exalted Weapon is called. Uh, but, this will unlock your Exalted Weapon, which can do a lot of damage. I love this Warframe solely based on the fact that when you unlock your Restraint Meter, Fully, nothing can come close to you. All you need to do is press your E key and your left key or whatever key you use for melee and everything you look at is dead. This Warframe is incredible for that. His survivability is incredible. You can put enemies to sleep. You can throw the daggers at them so they don't have any weapons. You can use a loot if you want it. You just literally stand still and put your restraint meter down. And when it goes down... Unleash those hands, boy! You can literally kill anything that comes up in your face. So, this Warframe is incredible in my eyes. Moving on to the top one Warframe. Now, th this is... I honestly I honestly have to say this is a toss-up between number one and two because Baruch is incredible as well. But Wukong is going to be my Warframe. I love Wukong. I use him almost for every single possible mission I can. He has a little bit more health than uh, armor, sorry, than Inaros does. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure uh, how much he has more than 
what's it called uh more health and stuff i mean health probably not but definitely not sorry but uh not sure what the other warframes uh, armor value is at but his abilities are incredible first his passive uh so every time uh three times so not more than three times he can avoid a critical hit uh so if he gets critically damaged uh, below his cell goes below his well the number he can possibly go uh he will revive himself not really revive himself you won't even die uh, and he will restore 50 percent of his health being vulnerable for two seconds and you have a chance for a unique buck buff sorry uh, Primal Forces, which is the first one, 300 elemental damage for 60 seconds, Heavenly Cloak, invisible for 30 seconds, uh, Cosmic Armor, invulnerable for 30 seconds, and Monkey Lock, enemies uh, killed yield extra loot drops for 60 seconds. Now, moving on to his actual abilities. Celestial Twin is his first ability. This is the smartest AI in the game. Uh, he uses, I guess, the... the not the same weapon as you do, but uh, I guess, uh, what's it called? Uh, not. So if you use a melee, I'm going to start off like this and I don't want to end the video here. Um, if you use a melee weapon, he's going to use your primary. If you use a primary, he's going to use your melee weapon. I don't know what happens. I don't know actually what happens with the secondary. If you possibly can, maybe get, I usually, what I do is I let him run with my Ignis Wraith just everywhere and he kills everything because he does the same damage with your primary melee and secondary as you would do by using them. So that is awesome. You do not have a duration on this and he also has a two times damage multiplier. So what I do is I just equip my Cronin Prime and I let him take my Ignis and he runs around and flames enemies to death. This is an awesome Warframe to use in any high tier mission. Cloudwalker. Second ability, uh, uh, this is awesome for uh, spy missions as well as uh, capture missions, any fast mission, use this. Now this turns him into a cloud which uh, allows him to move around everywhere and gain health per meter uh, covered, which is very nice. The, this is a very useful ability to travel fast and get out of danger's uh, way. Defy. Defy and his twin, or uh, sorry Wukong and his twin, go into an invincible stage where Every single point of damage that they take counts up to a maximum of 1,500 armor, which is awesome to have. Honestly, this lasts for a decent amount of time with my build. And of course, uh, once this ability, I guess, ends, you do a massive swing with your stick and you do a lot of damage with that. And his last ability is Primal Fury. This is the only ability that kind of lets you down at the end, but... His first three abilities will allow you to survive anything that is thrown on you. So, this Warframe, in my eyes, is very, very useful in capture missions, in extermination missions, in, in any sort of fast mission. Cloudwalker or Wukong, in my eyes, is the Warframe to pick. This Warframe also survives in survival missions pretty easily. He's not that good at excavations if you don't have a Frost or something like that, but nonetheless, he's a good Warframe in survival missions as well and, and endgame missions. But yeah, this has been my list. It's been a longer video than usual. Hope you guys enjoyed. This has been the Gaming Weasel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.